Matthew chapter 16, and this piggybacks off of what came in the praise and worship. When you were singing, you were everything to me. And then she went into talking about master, savior, healer, deliverer, Jesus, father, and going down all of the things that we call them. Y'all stick with me this morning. Who Jesus, help me to get this out. In Matthew 16, verse 13, it says, When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? The Son of Man am. He tried to give them a hint. He said, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say. Listen, y'all. He said, So they, so they said, all of them, collectively, they said, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? He asked them, He said, Who do you say that I am? And they said, everybody collectively answered. But then he said, but who do you say? I'm glad to hear of what everybody else says that I am. But who do you say? Personally, who do you say that I am? And though he was talking to them, and though it says that they answered collectively, then this response doesn't come from they. This, re re this response comes from he. The response comes from Simon Peter. And it says, Simon Peter answered, because obviously he didn't want to give a collective answer. Even in worship, he didn't want to say, okay, I know that this is corporate uh, worship, and so I'm going to let the worship leader sing for me. I'm going to let the praise and worship leader speak for me. I'm going to let Pastor Ty speak for me. He said, okay, collectively, that's cool that we agree about who he is. But then he says, who do you, who do you say that I am? And he didn't want, Peter didn't want to give a collective answer. Peter said, no, this is what I say about you. I know what everybody else is saying, but I, Peter, Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And this is the part that I want to highlight today that I believe is going to set some people free this morning. And also I say to you, that you are Peter. Let's stop right there. He says, who do you say that I am? And he says, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He goes apart from the crowd. He goes apart from the collective answer of what everybody else says that he is. And he says, I'm not going to let anybody else speak for me. I need to speak about who he is to me. And he says, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus. And then Jesus' response is not to they. It says that they answered, but then Peter spoke out. So Jesus' response, he's not speaking to all the group collectively anymore. He's not speaking to all of them. He speaks directly to Peter because Peter is the one that had the revelation. He speaks directly to Peter and he says, and you are Peter. Before he goes any further, he says, you are Peter because I need to let you know what your name is. Now that you have a revelation about who I am, I'm going to give you a revelation about who you are. Now that you know who I am, now I can reveal to you your purpose. Now that you know who I am, I can reveal to you the gifts that I put on the inside of you. Now that you know who I am, you can fully operate in the power that I put on the inside of you. But until you know who I am, you won't know who you are. Because you've been looking in a mirror that's been slightly dim, that's been smudged, that be, that's been smeared. You can bring the music down. You've been looking into a mirror that has been distorted. And so you don't know who you are. Not, and it's not your fault that you've not been able to figure out your anointing and your ability and the power you have on the inside of you. It's not your fault because you've been looking at the wrong person. And what he's saying is, I need you to look at me to find out who you are. And once you know who I am, then I can release on you what I've called you to do. This is what Peter this is what he says to Peter. He says, I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. What he's saying is on this rock, not just, hey, I'm going to build my rock. I'm, I'm going to build a church, and Peter, I'm going to use you to do it. But he's saying now that you have a revelation of who I am, I can trust you to dump everything that I've been trying to get out through you. 
And so I'm not going to just build a church. And I know some of y'all think, well, I'm not a pastor. This don't apply to me. Now that I'm able to flow through you and create a business, now that I'm able to dump on you and write this book, now that I'm able to create a Bible study, now that I'm able to, to create this home, now that I'm able to create this, 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 this group that you're supposed to start, now that you have a revelation of who I am, now I can trust you with what I'm ready to give to you. Now you have a firm foundation. This was something I found as well, that he wasn't just saying, hey, I'm going to use you to start the church, that I'm going to build a foundation. Yeah, that's one, that's one uh, interpretation of it. But this is what I also found, is that the name Peter actually means rock. What he's saying is what I'm asking you to do is what I created you to do. Peter, I'm not asking you to do anything out of the norm. I'm not asking you to do something that I've not already put in you. I named you Peter for a reason, and you got your name even before you understood what your name meant. You got your name even before you could talk. When I formed you in your mother's womb, I had already created you to be a rock for the church, and so I needed to give you a name that was fitting for your purpose. But this is the part where I need to set some people free. Because he goes on to say, not only am I going to build my church on you, on your name, on your back, on your shoulders, because you have revelation of who I am. But this is what your purpose is going to accomplish as a result of you getting a revelation of who I am and me showing you who you are. This is what it's going to accomplish as you do it. And he says, and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it this is heavy right here and I know a lot of y'all have read this before and a lot of y'all have seen this and we've we've even sung the songs and the gates of hell will not prevail we like we've sung the songs and we know it we've heard it before but what does this actually mean in the context of what we're talking about in this story he says Peter now that you know who I am now that you know who you are you can walk in the authority that I've given you and so now the gates of hell will not prevail against it the it that we're talking about is what I've called you to create right and he says the gates of hell the gates let me highlight that he said the gates of hell when we think about a gate when we think about a fence a fence and a gate is usually for defense right we don't build a gate and then say all right now let's go out and get them no we build a gate as a defense right and even if you think about the gates of hell you think why would Satan need a gate why would Satan need a fence, right? Because he does not have any power. Amen. We're walking around like, oh, Satan, Satan is busy. Satan, Satan is attacking. Satan doesn't have any offensive weapons. All he has is a defense, right? He doesn't have any power other than the power that we give to him. So all he has is defense. The only time his gates open is when he grabs hold of somebody that has allowed themselves to be captured and he pulls them in to his domain. And then the fence is to guard against anybody who would try to come and deliver anybody who is under his oppression. Let me talk about some heavy stuff this morning. I hope y'all hear me. Y'all got to follow me because I don't even have time to break down as much as I want to break down this morning. It says the gates of hell will not prevail, meaning the gates of hell will not stand against the power that I put on the inside of you. A lot of us are walking around defeated because we have given Satan undue power that he doesn't even deserve, undue power that he doesn't even have. If we can imagine it like this, if somebody walks up to you and they point a gun to your head, Initially, you would probably think this person has power, and so I am under their authority. Matter of fact, thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. This is something he just showed me in the back room even before service just started, and this is what I saw, and I'm going to try to paint the picture as clearly as I saw it. What I saw was Satan holding a gun up to somebody's head, and for them going through the motions of every detail that he whispered in their ear because he because they felt like he had control over their life. So everything that he said, they would do it. Not because I don't love God, not because I'm not a Christian, not because I'm a worshiper, 
but because I feel like my life is being threatened, so let me just go through the motions of doing what I can to spare my life. And Satan walked, Satan walked them right into Hades, right into his gates. The gates opened. He walked them right in with a gun to their head and closed the gate. And I see people trapped in Hades, trapped in death, trapped in Satan's grips. I'm not talking about you died already. I'm talking about you're living. Let me, let me, let me rephrase it. You're alive, but you're not living, right? You're, you're alive. You have breath in your lungs, but you're just going through the motions. And what I saw was Satan with his gun up to somebody's head and just walking them through the motions of life because them fearing their life and just thinking, well, if I could just go through the motions long enough, maybe I'll just figure out a way kind of to be released in this. This is the part that we have to understand about Satan's power and even about the gates of hell. Is that Satan, let me see if I can say it like this. <clears throat> Satan is a punk. Satan, and this is what the word of God says about Satan. He says that he prowls around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And I don't know if y'all know anything about poetry or, 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 about, um, or about language and, and, and uh, about words, but the word as will be used usually for a simile, like or as, comparing one thing to another, but the one thing is not the other thing, right? Y'all get that? So he walks around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He walks around roaring, and whoever it will, whoever hears his roar and then submits to his power, that's the one that he's going to capture. Even naturally, a lion is not going to go after the fastest gazelle. He's going to find the slowest. He's going to find the baby. He's going to find the one that gets left behind, and that's the one that he's going to attack. And so often we give Satan all of this power that he doesn't even have. He walks around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But this is the part where the table kind of turns a little bit. The part where we realize that he actually doesn't have any power at all. That he actually doesn't have any authority at all. As a matter of fact, I see somebody as the person with the gun to their head, and then he actually pulls the trigger trying to kill you. And that moment that you realize his gun doesn't even have any bullets in it. How would you respond if somebody has been bullying you? And that's exactly what he is. He's a bully. Seeking to, see, seeking to see who's small enough, who's puny enough, who won't fight back that I can bully, that I can throw in this little cave, that I can torture and they won't fight back. Right? Being bullied. How would you respond to somebody? And I don't know, maybe some of y'all wasn't raised this way or some of y'all don't really know about this unwritten rule. But, but I, I, I know a little bit. I, I didn't come up in the streets, quote unquote. But I came up around a bunch of family that was. And I've, I've been around long enough, or I know enough to know that if you pull your gun out, you better use it. You pull it, you better shoot it. Right? This is Satan. He pulls his gun out. Everybody shakes. Everybody freezes. Everybody's looking around like, what's about to happen? He has complete control over the situation. If you can imagine the situation where he pulls the gun out, everybody stops. He says, hey, give me all your money. Give me your watch. Give me your wallet. Give me everything you have. And you give it to him because you assume that he has power and authority. And then he gets upset and he says, hey, you're not moving fast enough. He pulls the trigger and it's a blank. How do you respond in that moment? Are oh, we banging heads. Somebody getting knocked out, right? Once I realize you don't got no bullets in that gun, Oh, it's, it's going down and it's going down real quick. And that's exactly what he is. He's a bully walking around with a gun that doesn't even have any bullets in it. He has no power and no authority because guess what? The only authority that he has, he actually has to get permission. Because what is authority? Authority is the right to exercise your power. He has to get authority and that authority usually comes from you. Giving him the power that he doesn't even have. Let, let us walk us through this. It says, Peter, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. There is nothing that is going to come up strong enough to be able to stop you from doing what I've called you to do. Peter, now that you have a revelation about who I am. No, it's not about what everybody else said that I am. Though we had an awesome worship experience, it's not about what the worship leaders, and she went through all the names of who he is. It's not about what they say I am. It's about who you think I am. The word of God says, you, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. But, it, but if you don't know the truth, then you can't be free. 
And it's not about the truth that somebody else knows and you're just piggybacking off of that truth. It's the truth that you know. And so if you're yelling out about God, I know you as a provider, and that's really not your truth, right? Then it's just lip service. That, there's no power in that because that's not your truth. So he asked, who do you say that I am? Because I need to know what your truth is, Peter. I need to know what your truth is, Miss Marjorie. I need to know what your truth is, Kevin. I need to know what your truth is, Christine. I need to know what your truth is. Because that's the only truth that is going to bring about your freedom. I learned this as well. For somebody streaming this morning, you might be dealing with pornography. You know what pornography is? Essentially, at its root, pornography is me getting a fix off of somebody else's high. Y'all understand this? I need to watch somebody else in order for me to get a rise. Y'all listen to what I'm saying, right? I, it's, it's almost like contact. I don't need to explain what contact is. It's almost like contact. I get a high off somebody else, some, some second hand, right? Right? Us piggybacking off of somebody else. So we come in service, we lift up our hands in worship, and we're piggybacking off of somebody else's worship experience. Right? We get in contact from the worship leader. We get in contact from the pastor. And we're like, oh, that was a good word. Oh, worship leader, you took us into the presence of God. And you get into the presence of God, but nothing is true about what they're saying to you. So we're hearing collectively when he says, who do men say that I am? And you're hearing people say, well, some say Elijah, some say the prophet, some say John the Baptist. Okay, well, who do you say? But he said, he said to them, and they said. But then when he said, okay, I hear what they say, but who do you say that I am? Notice when he said, who do you say that I am? He didn't regurgitate or repeat anything of what they said. He said, yeah, that's their truth. They believe that you're Elijah. Because Elijah, we know that he got swept up in a chariot, right? He never really died. So maybe this is Elijah in the flesh. You know, maybe this is John the Baptist because he was out in the wilderness. We ain't seen him in a while. So maybe this is John the Baptist after a few years, right? No, all right, I know what they said. No, but what do you say? Because your truth isn't that he's John the Baptist. Your truth isn't that he's Elijah. Your truth is that he's the Christ, the son of the living God. My truth is that you are my provider, even if I'm reading on the news that you ain't been providing for nobody, even though I'm hearing news reports that everybody is struggling, my, my testimony and my truth is that you are a provider. Even though I'm hearing a lot of stories about a lot of people dying, a lot of people passing away, and as many lives as this virus has claimed, and, and, and my God, it breaks my heart every time I hear another story. Those are facts, but my truth is that God is a healer at the end of the day. And even if he doesn't do it, I know that he is able to do it. And so the fact that he has the capacity to do it makes the statement true about his character. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's not asking, what does everybody else say about me? I don't need you piggybacking about on, on your mother's worship experience. I don't need you piggybacking on your grandmother's relationship with, with Jesus. I want to know what do you say? Who do you say that I am? Because your truth is going to determine the people that he's called you to deliver. He said, Peter, first of all, I need you to know what your name means. I need you to know that Peter actually means rock. And so that what I'm calling you to do, this thing has been preordained. This thing I've already called you to do even before you live one day. It's already been written out in the book, Peter. And so this is what I've called you to do. And so actually, honestly, it's not even about you, Peter. It's actually about the people who Satan has trapped in Hades, who he has set up a fence that nobody has been able to crack. That's who it's really about. It's not even about what you're going through. It's about what you believe me to be true. God, I believe. Let me read a little bit further. This is what it says in 19. It says, and, which lets me know he wasn't done with the whole sentence, what he, what he said about Peter. I've called you to own this rock. I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And... I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you loose shall be loose. You know why he was able to give him power to bind and loose himself? Not just, all right, God loosed it and so I need to loose it. God bound it up so I need to bind it. He was able to give Peter power to bind and to loose because Peter had a revelation of who he was. 
Peter knew, okay, God, I understand who you are. Now that I know who you are, I understand your character. Now that I know your character and your makeup, I know that how you would operate here in the earth. I know that it will be illegal for you to trespass here on earth because you're spirit, but you need a body to put yourself in to give authority and to speak over different situations in my life and to see those things overturned. If I see something going a certain way and I don't like it, he's given me authority to bind that thing at its root and to curse it where it is. If I see something that I need to be released, then he's given me permission and power to release that thing and say, you know what? I bind up confusion. But I'm not just going to bind something. I need an alternative. I need to lose something as well. I'm binding up confusion, but then I'm loosing unity. All right? I'm binding up turmoil, but then I'm loosing rest in the name of Jesus. I'm binding up anxiety, and I'm loosing freedom. He's giving you ability and power to bind and loose at your will. Whatever you bind, that's what will be bound. Whatever you loose, that, that's what will be loose. But it came because Peter had a revelation of who God was. So God was able to trust Peter with the power and authority to do so. I'm getting ready to finish up on this note right here. I'm going to be a little transparent right here. And some of y'all might look at me weird. Some of y'all might look at me different and funny and say, Pastor, I don't know, man. You on some different type of stuff. I don't know if I can really talk to you no more because you you, you kind of out there. Mm. Um. God has given me some spiritual gifts um, for a lot of them that I've not even scratched the surface in. But for some of them, he's allowed me to dive pretty deep into. And for some of the or or at least one of those, I highlight one in particular. Um, God allows me to have dreams, not just dreams, but also to have spiritual encounters. That's not nothing I'm wishing on anybody else. I'm not praying that on anybody else that you'll be able to see angels standing in a room or be able to see demons in the spirit or that you'll have dreams where you are fully aware of everything that's going on and control everything. I'm not, I'm not wishing that on nobody. If you have that gift, then you can probably relate. If not, you'll still be able to follow me in this. Um, over the course of my life, I have had many, 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 more than I can count, but I have them all written down in notebooks, literally a case of notebooks, probably, I'm not exaggerating, probably about 20 or so notebooks just full of visions and dreams. Over the course of my life, I've had many dreams and visions. Dreams where I walk into a dungeon, it's pitch black, people are chained literally up against the walls, and I'm walking through the middle of them. And people reaching out, trying to grab hold of me, right? I've had dreams where I go into a pit and I'm literally grabbing people and yanking them out. I've had dreams where I've literally had to fight demons and imps. And if this helps anybody, they were probably only about two feet tall. Say the little pump, let me just say that. Where I'm fighting imps and literally chopping their heads off in my dreams. I've had multiple visions where I am awake, where God has given me open visions, actually seeing demon faces, actually hearing them, me having to cast out demons, literally in the flesh. I'm not talking about a dream. And I knew that I had to share some of this stuff as far as the gates of hell Um, I didn't know it at the time, but earlier this week I had a dream. Earlier this week. And it wasn't anything out of the normal, uh, out of the norm at first, but earlier this week I had a dream. And um, in short, um, there was a, there was a, there was a a, a lady that was possessed in the dream. And she's, I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail because I don't know who, who's able to handle it all or not. And I don't want y'all to look at me crazy. But actually, your pastor is a little crazy. Um, I'm able to see she's, she's flipping out. Whatever you would imagine if somebody was possessed, that's what she's doing. Um, she's flipping out in the dream. And so I begin to plead the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> and in Jesus' name, come out right now. And I'm motioning for that thing to go. And I said it a few times, and then it came out, and she just hit the floor, and she got back up. Didn't think too much of it because I'm like, hey, this stuff kind of happens on the regular for me. 
Um, the very next day, very next day, I have another dream where again, um, somebody is possessed under demonic influence and they're screaming and they're yelling out and everybody's panicking, everybody's creeping out. And, and I begin to speak to the spirit because I know the spirit. And so I'm not talking to the flesh. I'm not talking to the flesh because obviously they're under some type of spiritual control. They're screaming out, acting out, flipping out, yelling, head rolling, eyes rolling, and everybody's, everybody around them is freaking out. And so I start yelling at them and I say, in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, get out in the name of Jesus. And initially something started to happen. It started to back up, but then it closed its eyes. And then as it closed its eyes, it started acting up again. And so I'm, I'm yelling again, in the name of Jesus, get out. And as I do, nothing's happening. So then I realize something. I'm like, hold on. I need you to open up your eyes. I need to see inside your soul. I need to look. And, and that's why, and some of y'all probably know it, but that's why sometimes when, when you're talking to people, some people are not able to look you in your eyes. Because you look them in their eyes. If, 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 if the Holy Spirit is activated and that thing is stirring up on the inside of you, then it does something to them. And you're able to see beyond the surface. So I said, open up your eyes. I said, look at me. And I'm yelling at it, and I get down on my knees. And I'm like, look at me. Look at me. And I grab him. I say, look at me. Look at me. And right when it opened up its eyes, that thing immediately left. Again, at this point, I'm kind of like two nights in a row. I don't really know what's going on. It was probably uh, it was a night. And then probably two days later, I had another one. Three of them in one week. Normally, they're kind of sporadic, but three of them in one week. And it was then that I knew that God was going to have me fighting this week. And I have. And everything is not coming out in this message, but know that I've been fighting this week. Spiritually, spiritual warfare, because I know it's some people that need to be pulled out of this thing. And when I read this yesterday, this wasn't even the message for today. I was reading through this and my spirit just stood up. My spirit stood at attention. And I was like, I need to share this today is that Peter was able to operate in his power and authority and pull down strongholds and to knock down the gates of hell because he had a revelation of who God was. He said, God, I hear what everybody else is saying about you, but this is who you are to me and who you are to me now gives me authority and the, and the power that I need to operate in what you have called me to do. Because if I don't know who you are and I get out there and I try to fight these battles on my own, then when I get to the gates of hell, I'm going to be discouraged. When I, when I come up against opposition and somebody who's fighting for their life, I'm going to feel like there's nothing I can do to help them because I don't feel like I have it within me. And guess what? You don't. You don't have the power within yourself not even to fight for your own life, let alone to fight for somebody else. And that's why he's saying, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. Matter of fact, he didn't even say, I want you to go kick the door in and go rescue a bunch of people that are under Satan's oppression. He didn't, he didn't say, hey, I want you to go burn hell down. It's already on fire. He, he didn't say, hey, I want you to, to bust in there with firepower and to shoot up the place. He didn't say any of that. He said, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. And so even in warfare, even as we're fighting, even as we're trying to see people set free, even as we're trying to see people liberated, that doesn't necessarily mean even physically that you need to put your hands on them. He's saying, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. He's saying, I've given you keys to be able to unlock spiritual things that's going on in their lives. It may be a word. It may be through intercession. It may be a verse. It may be you laying on your face. It may be somebody that you don't even see in person. It might even be over the phone. I said it earlier in this message that the spirit knows no boundaries. The spirit is not limited by phone lines. The spirit is not limited by cameras. The spirit is not limited by Wi-Fi. The spirit knows no limitations. Matter of fact, I don't know if y'all know it, but in the word of God, it says, where can I go to get away from your presence? Where can I go to get away from your spirit? Even if I'm in hell, your, your spirit will cause me, will, will be there even with me. Even if I make my bed in hell, where can I go to get away from your spirit? 
What he's saying is, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. I've given you keys. And these keys are the keys that I need you to use for you to either bind, for you to lock that door and say, you know what? I'm not opening that door anymore. I'm not going back to it anymore. I'm, matter of fact, I'm shutting the door and I'm going to destroy that door because I don't see myself going back to that depression anymore. Or you might be the person who says, all right, well, today I need to loose. Today I need to unlock. Today I need to open up some uncommon favor. Today I need to open up some grace. Today I need to open up some mercy. Today I need some peace of mind. And he's giving you to, the keys to unlock it yourself. Not only do you have power to speak over your situation, but you also have authority. You also have authority. Not only do you have firepower, but you also have a badge. So when you go into, uh, when you go into situations that don't look favorable, you can step up in there and you can say, Satan, no, you're not a lion. You're as a roaring lion. Say, no, 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 no. You're not a bully. You're actually a punk. You don't got no bullets in that chamber. So everything that you've been speaking to me, I don't want to hear it anymore. You can shut it. I'm closing the door to your voice, and I don't want to hear it anymore. He's given us power and authority, and the gates of hell will not prevail. I want to pray this morning for somebody who you've been feeling, whether you've been the person on the inside of those gates, feeling like you've been trapped feeling like you've been chained up on those walls, or if you've been the person on the outside of those gates praying for your family, praying for your friends, pleading the blood of Jesus so that those gates might be open so that you can see them free themselves. I don't care what side of the gates of hell that you're on. This morning, I want to pray for somebody who needs that power. I want to pray for somebody who needs that authority. I want to pray for somebody who has a challenge receiving the keys to the kingdom. Well, what does that person look like, Pastor? That person is the person who's, who, who God has already spoken to. He says, hey, Peter, I called you Peter because you are a rock. And upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. But for you, you say, man, you know what? I'm not ready for you to build on this yet, God. Yeah, God, I'm not quite ready to go and deliver the people that you've called me to, to deliver. God, I'm not quite ready to go and, and, and open up the gates of hell. I'm not quite ready because I just need something, something for me. I, I want to pray over you this morning as well so that God can give you a revelation of who he is. You want to know the difference between God's omnipresence and the glory of God? The difference between God is everywhere and the manifested glory, the, 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 the glory of God, the manifested presence of God. The difference is just that God unveils himself. That is the only difference. His omnipresence is I got to keep the veil on, but I'm going to show up. I'm going to come in, but I'm not going to let you see me. I'm going to come in, but I'm not going to let you touch me. I'm going to come in, but I'm not going to let you hold me. But then the manifested presence, the glory of God is when he unveils himself, when he reveals himself. It's almost like the light comes on and you say, oh, my God, you were here the whole time. Oh, my God, you were in you were within reach the whole time. And that's all I'm saying. Having a revelation of who God is, is him unveiling himself. Is him showing you who he is. It's him showing you your truth in the matter and what you actually believe him to be. This morning, I want to pray for you. And even specifically this morning, you don't even have to put it in the comments this morning because I know this is, this is something a little bit more personal. But if you want to, then sure, we'll pray with you. If not, then you don't have to. I want to pray with you this morning. I want to pray for somebody who's either on the side of the gates of hell that you are pleading the blood that you, are war, that you are warring on somebody else's behalf, that you are walking in your purpose and calling, but you, you, you find that it is a struggle and a constant battle you trying to pull people out of hell. Or the person who's on the other side of the gates, who you have been fighting for your life. And Satan has had you bound. Now this ain't the time to be super spiritual. This ain't the time to say, oh, no, Satan don't have me. I can get free whenever I want to be. Now, if you could get free whenever you wanted to be, then, then, then you would be free. I've never met somebody who didn't want to be free. I've never met somebody who did not want freedom. But for somebody you're on the other side of that gate, and you say, man, Pastor, I can't even lie. Satan has been whooping my butt. He's been bullying me. He's been punking me around. You've been pushing me around. Seems like he got this tight grip on me, and no matter how hard I try, I think it, the pressure is just never relieved. 
I need something a little bit stronger than me. Y'all hear my heart on this. I need something a little bit stronger than just a scripture. I need something a little bit stronger than just a good message. Pastor, I need a little bit, something a little bit stronger than just some encouragement. <clears throat> Whew, Jesus. But I need some blood. Thank you, Jesus. What was that thing that emptied Satan's gun of all of his ammo? It was the cross, the blood of Jesus. Thank you, God. And Satan's worst nightmare <clears throat> is not necessarily that he'll let you go free. Because he can open up the gate and he can, he can let you go and he can say, man, you know what? I'm not going to torture you anymore. I'm going to just release you. It's not necessarily your freedom. His worst nightmare is that you'll actually wake up and realize who you really are. His worst nightmare is you actually walking in the power and the authority that God has given you. Because your freedom doesn't scare him if you're not pulling people out of his gates of hell. His real fear is that you're actually going to start messing with his house. His real fear is that everything that comes out of your mouth is going to start coming to pass. His real fear is that when you lay hands on your family, that they're going to be healed. His real fear is that once you set up your mind to intercede on somebody's behalf, they're going to go free too. Because once you start messing with his money, that's when he gets upset. He don't care about your freedom. He don't care that you lift your hands and worship and that you're, you're, you're able to sing. He, he's not too disturbed about that. What he's disturbed about is the truth of what Peter said. He said, yeah, that's what everybody else is saying collectively, but this is what I know to be true. That if God be for me, who can be against me? That's what I know to be true. What I know to be true is that even if my mother and my father forsake me, that you sticketh closer than a brother, that's what I know to be true. Father, I thank you for each individual who desires to know the truth. I know. I know it's not easy. I know it's not. Because in your situation, the facts outweigh the truth. Because in your situation, you're looking at what the doctor said. I, I get it. Trust me. Trust me. I know it's hard. When they give you a report and the report is contrary to what you know to be truth. God, I thank you. I'm not telling you something that's going to be easy. This is not something I'm sharing with you this morning. I'm saying, hey, all you have to do is. No, what I'm telling you this morning is that you are going to have to fight for your life. I'm not telling you, hey, all you got to do is go back home and, and, and study this this weekend and, and your deliverance is going to come in three days. I'm, I'm not saying, hey, I have a word for you this morning and, and, and all you have to do is, is send this stream out to, to 10 people to share it 10 times and your deliverance is going to come speedily. I'm telling you something that you're going to have to, oh my God. No, nah, I don't want you to put on no gloves for this one. This one, you're going to have to go bare knuckle. After this one, you might have some scratches. After this one, you might have some scars. But I'm talking to somebody who, who, who is ready for the fight. This is the fight of your life. Yeah, pastor, my job let me go. <clears throat> yeah, my finances don't, don't quite line up with the truth of what I know God to be. God, I got a, uh, pastor, I, I, I got a call last week <clears throat> and they saying that it's not looking good. I need you to send up some prayers. I need you to come in come and see them for the last time because it don't look like they're going to be around for much longer. 
Yeah, Pastor, I know the truth, but the facts right now are stacked up against it. <clears throat> yeah, I know the truth, but right now the, the facts just don't look good. This is the fight of your life. And this morning, I want to pray for somebody, not just somebody who's, who's willing to lay down and just let life happen. I want to pray for somebody this morning who is ready for the fight. Somebody who is not scared to put up their dukes and to go for it. Somebody whose back is up against the wall and maybe this is your last resort. Now, I don't got nowhere to go. I can't tuck tail this time. I can't run this time because I don't have anywhere to go. Oh, my God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. What I see right now is somebody's back up against the wall. And Satan has you cornered. You were crying. You were weeping. You were about to plan your own funeral. You were about to get the plans together. You were like, hey, this is going to be my last. You had given up hope. You had already thrown in the towel. You saw this as your last. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But just when you were ready to give up, you saw God standing right behind Satan. Let me make it more clear. I saw it like this. Imagine a bully standing before you, but then your big brother standing right behind him. Hmm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah, I see the facts, but I see the truth. Yeah, I see the fight that's in front of me, but I also see that my big brother Jesus is about to take him out. Yeah, I see what's in front of me, and though I was about to give up, I thank God that he showed up right in the nick of time, and he gave me the very hope that I needed when all hope was lost. God, I thank you for showing up exactly when I needed it, because if you weren't here, then I was ready to give it all up. God, I thank you. I thank you that even at my wick's end, When there was nothing left, I thank you, God, that right here in this moment, you're showing up for somebody who maybe this morning, they didn't even want to get out of the bed. God, I thank you that our hope is in you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, maybe somebody has not gathered themselves enough to understand the truth of who you are. Father, but I want to exercise the spiritual power and the authority that you have given me to speak over those that you have given me. God, I thank you that you have given me authority over this flock and over the people that you have called us to even in this region. And right now I speak life even to dry bones. I speak ligaments to wrap itself around those bones. I speak muscle in the name of Jesus that they'll be able to see life forming all around them, not just in them, but all around them. God, that they'll be able to see things coming together together that it might not be a physical thing God but I thank you in the spirit you'll open their spiritual eyes to be able to see chariots surrounding them that will fight the battle on their behalf God I thank you that you'll open up their eyes to be able to see the truth that outweighs the natural facts father I thank you that even in the spirit that they'll be able to see victory even before they have it in the flesh Father, I thank you. I thank you, God. We bind up depression. We bind up spiritual oppression. I bind up even that spirit of witchcraft, that demonic force that would try to have you take yourself out. Hallelujah. I bind up a spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. I bind up anxiety. 
I bind up that crippling spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. Father, and I loose your peace to flow like a river, washing, purging, purifying. I thank you for restoration. That all of the weeks and the months that the canker worm and the palmer worm has eaten away. Father, I thank you that you will restore and that all that has been lost in this season will be found in an instant. Father, I thank you that this morning you have spoken past the flesh spoken past the natural ears and ear, uh, in, the, in the eyes of the, the natural man. But I thank you this morning that you have chosen to speak to our spirit. And I thank you for spiritual freedom, but in abundance of spiritual freedom that spears, spills over into the flesh. That even when we wake up in the morning that we'll feel lighter. When we open our eyes in the morning, that our mind won't go to ne towards negativity, but it will go towards what you're going to do for this day. Father, that our minds will be free and that we'll no longer be tangled in the snares and the traps of the enemy. To try to overwhelm us, to think that there's too much to even begin. Father, I thank you for the power and the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> now, this might not be everybody, and I don't want you to just, just say it just for the sake of saying it. <sighs> but if this morning you believe that you got, I'm hesitant to say breakthrough, I want to use it as the Bible puts it in here. This morning, you believe that God gave you a key to open up your liberation this morning. Actually, let me be more clear, more precise. <clears throat> Maybe somebody's streaming this morning. Maybe your deliverance came similar to how mine came. This might not be everybody. But you almost physically feel a weight and a burden lifted off of your chest. Let us know. Because maybe that testimony of an instant deliverance might encourage somebody who's streaming this morning. Maybe for somebody who it came in an instant, even as we are praying, maybe it came earlier during the praise and worship. Whenever it came, somebody you feel like you got exactly what you needed and it was a breath of fresh air and you feel like uh, something was loose this morning that something was broken over you that a chain was broken that 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 bondage was destroyed this morning just let us know not just for the sake of us knowing but I believe that even an instantaneous deliverance might encourage somebody this morning I can't see the comments but if that's you I just want you to drop it in there <clears throat> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Also, really briefly, I just want to pray. If there's anybody who's streaming right now or even at a later date, and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, maybe you have already and you want to recommit your life to Jesus Christ. Um, you are saved, but you say, I want to take it a step further. I want to re receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's you this morning. Or the fourth invitation, you say, hey, I want to become a member. Uh, I want to be a part of our Flowing Life family. You want to plant yourself here. You see yourself growing here. You want to be a part of this family. Any four of those invitations, I just want you to drop that in the comments right now as well, either so that we can pray for you or so that we can rejoice with you. Any four of those invitations, I want you to let us know now so that we can acknowledge you.
or if we need to take an opportunity or a moment to pray with you at this moment as, as well. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I see a couple of you in the comments. I see it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I hope that's encouraging to some of you who might be watching this and you see a few people who maybe theirs came instantaneously and everybody's doesn't, everybody doesn't come all at the same time. But I hope somebody is encouraged by seeing somebody else get free. I hope somebody is encouraged by seeing somebody else get delivered right on the spot and to expect that if you see it happen for somebody else to know that it's in the neighborhood. If you see it happen for somebody else to know that that thing must be lingering close by, to be able to rejoice with somebody else who rejoices as if it were your very own. God, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord.